guys, welcome back. I'm Amber and today is What If Wednesday. And so we are going to be doing chapter number 26 out of the book, What If God Wrote Your Bucket List by Jay Paleantner. And the idea of this book is what would God have on your bucket list if he was choosing for you or what the author thinks that God would have on your bucket list. So the title of today's is Do Typical Bucket List Stuff. And how we normally do this is we read the chapter, then we just talk about whatever it says. It's usually pretty short, just a couple pages, and then it'll have like a key point at the end. So we're gonna jump in, I'm gonna read that, and then we'll talk about it. With this chapter, we're halfway through God's bucket list, as I imagined it. Some readers may have given up, but my sincere thanks to you for staying the course. Even if you remain skeptical about the entire premise, a little skepticism is to be expected because we're pretending to have a handle on how God thinks. And that's just silly. Also, the list we're compiling doesn't feel like a traditional bucket list. Most of these chapters seem to be more about abstract concepts than specific places to go, things to do, or, ev or events to tend. So, to keep everybody happy, let's set aside the next few pages to assemble a more straightforward bucket list for men and women who really do want to pursue God's will. Some items are obvious, some not so much. The possibilities are endless, but let's try to focus on goals we can really achieve. Volunteer in a soup kitchen for the homeless. Do this with friends or with family members. It's hands-on, it's eye-opening, and there's probably a homeless shelter not too far from your home address. Ladling soup, pouring coffee, and chatting with guests puts you in the trenches doing work that meets a real need. It's an excellent introduction to developing the heart of a servant. I recommend scheduling yourself on days that are not holidays. Okay, so it looks like the way he's got this set up is there's each, at the beginning of each paragraph is one more thing that you could have on your bucket list for this chapter. Read the entire Bible in a year. Some people do this every year. Reading schedules are readily available. Several publishers produce Bibles con conveniently divided into 365 readings. If that's too intimidating, give yourself two years, or three, or five. Go on a short-term mission trip. Journey to a foreign land or an under underserved area of the United States to build a church. Repair homes, perform medical services, encourage pastors, visit prisoners, or spend time with eager small children. In many cases, the most important aspect of the trip is your foray out of your comfort zone. Look for short-term mission opportunities that don't feel like vacations. Stand on the rim of the Grand Canyon. No one can do this and not think about God. That's why it's on this list. Do sidewalk counseling outside a Planned Parenthood clinic. According to their own annual report, Planned Parenthood performs more than 300,000 abortions per year. When volunteer counselors share messages of love and offer prayers for women about to enter those clinics, sometimes babies are saved. Sounds like a noble cause to me. Attend a sing-along Messiah at Christmas time. Every December in Chicago and other cities around the world, professional musicians join with everyday music lovers to perform the moving masterpiece of George Frederick Handel. If the organizers don't sell copies of the vocal score, you can order yours online. Look up in the Sistine Chapel. History, religion, art, architecture, church politics, and so much more come together in this iconic structure in Vatican City. Imagine Michelangelo and his colleagues investing four years of their life during the first part of the 16th century, creating the magnificent frescoes that adorn the ceiling. I wanna do that. Visit the Holy Land. Walk where Jesus walked, Bethlehem, Nazareth, Jerusalem, the Sea of Galilee, the Garden of Gethsemane, the Mount of Olives, Golgotha, the term life-changing is used way too often to describe a variety of events and experiences, but standing in Israel and recalling the well-documented events of Christ's of Christ life truly is. That would also be really cool. Drop a huge anonymous gift in a Salvation Army bucket. If it's a true sacrificial gift, you'll feel great. Don't blow it by telling someone. Start a conversation with a stranger about spiritual things. The best way to really test your own belief system is to present it thoughtfully and perhaps boldly to a stranger. If it gets a little heated, that's not always bad. Next time, you'll be even better prepared. Spend a week in solitude. 
Would a week by yourself without speaking drive you bonkers? That monastic experience, just you and God, could actually be a turning point in your life. Deliver an angel tree gift. Present a Christmas gift to the child of a prison inmate and let them know that they have not been forgotten by their mommy or daddy. Every year, the Ministry of Prison Fellowship delivers hope to children, helps reconnect families, and softens the hearts of inmates who can't believe that someone actually cares about their lives and their children, all in the name of Jesus. Chaperone a church youth event, high school, middle school, or even younger. Surrender your adult instincts and enjoy the experience. Stay positive and you may even have a life-changing conversation with some young man or woman who needs some direction only you can give. It may be your ministry sweet spot or not. <laughs> Attend a stadium evangelistic event. Millions have come to Christ at crusades featuring Billy Graham and other, and other powerful and sincere preachers. Salvation decisions are made individually, but sometimes thousands come forward at a single event. Unforgettable. Read these six Christian classics. In His Steps by Charles Sheldon, More Than a Carpenter by Josh McDowell, The Screwtape Letters by C.S. Lewis, Through the Gates of Splendor by Elizabeth Elliot, The Pilgrim's Progress by John Bunyan, and Knowing God by J.I. Packer. Bookmark this chapter and check these items off one by one over the next 36 months. When you finish, track me down at my website, jpaleitner.com, and let me know. Or even better, inv invite me to join you as you ceremoniously check off the last item. But be warned, I'm going to ask you how you're doing on the other 51 items in this book. And then he has checking the list. And it says, this is as good a time as any to remember that we need to be more than deep thinkers and big talkers. We need to be doers of the word. In Matthew 7, 21, Jesus said, Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only the one who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. And then the little check mark, and it says, Go, do, and live like you believe. And really, that's so true. We're all full of a lot of big talk a lot of times. And so I feel like this was a good reminder to just make sure you are doing God's word and doing what you can to show God's love to others and taking every opportunity that you have to do that. So that's the end of this one. I hope maybe it encouraged you guys to think about what you could be doing. It definitely gives us a lot of good ideas of things that we could be doing. So hopefully we can use those to better God's kingdom. If you guys like this series, leave a comment down below. Let me know one that you, one of the chapters that really stood out to you that you enjoyed. Um, if you just like videos with me or me and Mariah, then I want to let you know that we post every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Monday and Wednesday are Bible-based, faith-based videos. And then Friday is usually a more lighthearted uh, lifestyle or beauty kind of video, things that we enjoy doing. So you can subscribe and hit the bell if you want to be notified of when we upload. And I hope to see you guys in the next one. Don't forget to shine. Bye!